Hi. So I've been working on refreshing my dining room table and chairs for the past couple of months and my set is actually a hand-me-down from one of my friends. They had this for a couple of decades while they were growing up and even though they upgraded since then it was too much of a waste for them to just sort out. So finally I came along and was able to snatch it away from them. And when I was first looking for dining room sets I originally wanted something new and something that was really close to my style that I wanted but then I saw the price tags and I figured that free was my style. So a really good way to make an older set look newer and also get rid of all the farts that have accumulated in the past few decades is to reupholster or recover your chairs. For me, I had six of them, so I will be walking you through the process of how to reupholster a chair and what my thoughts are and whether it was worth it. I have never reupholstered anything before, so this is my first time, so I'll also probably be making a couple of mistakes along the way. All right, let's get started. This is a quick before shot of one of the chairs that I'm going to be redoing and the first thing that you'll notice is that the bottom is pretty cracked so I'm going to be pulling all of those out. Alright, so here's a graveyard of the old protector booties that I yanked out of the old chairs. You can see that they're really well worn and serve their purpose well but uh, some of them are falling off on their own because of the lack of moisture in the rubber so they had to go. Um, you can see that some of them are literally crumbling away. Um, I use these soft touch felt pads instead to protect the ends of the chair so that they don't, you know, scrape on uh, my hardwood floors. Um, they're like five bucks on Amazon, um, pretty inexpensive. Um, and you can see what that looks like here. It already looks a lot newer because the ends of the legs aren't fraying away. Um, but I think the fabric, um, I do think it's over 10 years old or so, so I'll be stitching that out so that it looks a little bit newer. So I just took this cushion off of this dining room chair and it was actually pretty easy. Um, all I had to do was unscrew these two places here and the cushion itself really just sits on top of this um, ridged area of the chair uh, and this is just serving as a fashion so that took like less than a minute but what's taking a little bit longer or actually a lot longer is to get all the staples off of the cushion um, to get the fabric out. Essentially, I am doing this before even getting my fabric because I want to measure exactly how much fabric that I need. I had actually originally ordered three yards of ivory fabric to put all the chairs already, but after waiting a little over a month for all my fabric to come in, I realized that the actual fabric I needed for these chairs were out of stock, which is a huge bummer because it was on sale and things like that. So it was at like a really affordable price. I didn't really worry about like how much exactly that I needed because um, I could afford the scrap. But because I need to order uh, again and see what I need, and I've seen that the prices are pretty um, up there right now, I don't want to order more than I really need to. In general, for six dining room chairs, you're going to need two yards and one fourth. And that's because usually fabric comes in 54 inches of width and you need a 27 by 27 piece of fabric in order to reupholster one cushion. So if you think about it, if you think about the math, that comes out to 2.25 uh, yards of fabric if you assume that the width is 54 inches. But, you know, most places don't come out with, you know, two and a half yards. They're going to just want you to pick two yards or three yards. So. I do want to measure these chairs because I think they're a little bit smaller than the normal chair. So I feel like I can get away with two yards, but we'll see after all that. stapling all of this. I could just reuse this, but I bought new foam and Dacron because this is a little bit stained and when I'm sitting on these chairs I'm actually surprised that it had any cushion at all because it is pretty hard at this point and I think all the foam has pretty much died so I think I'll be redoing this part too. All right, so good news. I just measured the fabric that was used to reupholster the chair previously, or maybe this is the original fabric, I'm not actually sure. Um, and they used 22 by 22 inches of fabric, so I don't need the full 27. 
I think my foam is going to be a little bit higher than this though. This really doesn't have a lot of support for the butt, so I will probably need like an extra inch or so, but that should be okay if I just get two yards because I think that means it's about um, 24 inches one way and I'll still have the 27 inches the other way. So I think I will be good. So I'm just gonna be ordering two yards of fabric and hopefully they do not cut me an inch or two short because I will really need those inches. All right, so I'm ready to get started. What we'll need is the fabric, the foam, the Daycron padding, and the cambric dust cover if you're planning to use that. In terms of the tools, you'll need the staple remover, your screwdriver, a staple gun, and of course the staples themselves, as well as fabric shears or just plain scissors. And I'm gonna use some box cutters as well to help me cut out. If you're looking to cut some steps or save some money on the process, if you have a chair that is newer where the foam hasn't gotten quite as depressed, you can simply just recover your chair and not put in new foam or Daycron padding. If you do want to do that, but you want to see what's optional, you can skip the cambric dust cover and you might be able to get away with not putting any Daycron padding in it. It just really helps with making it a lot smoother and more comfortable in the beginning of sitting on your chair, but it is optional. I'm using a one inch foam here and you'll want to check which foam size makes sense for your chair. For mine, because the original foam was only half inch and I am using Daycron padding, I felt like doing more than one inch would be too much. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to measure out how much foam that I need, and I measured this last time, but just to make absolutely sure, I'll need 16 by about 17 and a half worth of foam. I'm just gonna put it over here. And the first thing I need is a box cutter to just um, make an outline of the foam, but it doesn't quite get in there enough to be able to completely cut out the foam. So I'm actually gonna just use my fabric scissors to cut it all completely. You can also use like a pair of serrated, like a serrated knife or something like that um, to be able to cut into the foam, but I do not have that at my disposal right now, so this is going to be the next best option. the stapling. What is going to be really important is to be really tight um, around the edges here so that it can stay right into place. <clears throat> you can use a spray adhesive on the wood board um, and the foam so that it kind of sticks more securely but I don't think it's necessary because I'm going to be Daycron padding over the foam and it's stapled in there. I'm going to pretty much do the same exact thing with the fabric that I've cut out, uh, just wrapping it around and stapling it. So I am going to get started with that right now. exact staples are not necessarily like all lined together but that is okay as long as it gets the job done kind of thing. I'm gonna put in a couple more staples to just secure the whole thing. 
Ooh, that was loud. And the other side looks pretty good. I would say um, if you're like a perfectionist, um, you can look at the lines of kind of the linen where it goes. Uh, mine is actually pretty on center, but it is a little bit like crooked this way, but I don't really care because it's a solid color, but for any of you out there, uh, you probably want to make sure that your patterns are lined up correctly and that will involve buying more fabric than I wanted to use. Um, so for this chair, the screws were over here, so perfect. These can lift up. I actually should have really kept that in mind before I stapled, so that's something to keep in mind um, for the next five chairs that I have to do. So uh, you might have noticed that I am skipping one last step and that is to add the cambric dust cover at the bottom of the chair and that's really mostly to prevent dust from getting inside and hiding the guts of the back but because this wood is pretty flat I don't think it's like particularly disgusting to look at. I am just going to try to do this on its own but you can definitely do that especially if like your backing of the chair is empty and things like that. So here is a test of whether this will work. I'm going to use the side that looks a little nicer as the front. Oh, goes this way. All right, perfect. Okay, so now all I really need to do is screw it back in the back and I will be done. getting started on anything like this it's always good to figure out whether it's worth it or not to even do the project based on the time that it's going to take you to do it the quality of the work that you're going to produce and the cost of the materials itself so starting with the time that it took me I would say that I took the most time taking out staples, which was really tedious and really boring and cramped up my hand. I did this all by myself, so it took me about a week to take out all the staples because I was doing like one to two hours per day. But I think if you weren't watching Better Call Saul episodes in the background and cranked it out in one day, you would be able to get it done a lot quicker. In terms of the actual putting together like the fabric and the foam and things like that. That was a lot more fun and it took, you know, like 30 minutes per chair by the end. So that really wasn't so bad. In terms of the quality, I think anybody with a staple gun could really do this. I would assume that a professional would do it a lot better, but because if it's especially only the bottom of the chair, I don't think that a lot of people are going to be able to mess it up or tell if a professional didn't do it. So in terms of that, it was totally worth it. In terms of cost, altogether, it took about $100 or a little bit under that for all the materials. And I'm including like even the staple gun, the staples, which I didn't have beforehand, the fabric, the foam, um, the Daycom padding, um, all the stuff that I had. Um, didn't cost that much. And I think if you were to buy an entirely new set, it would have been like $500 or $600. Um, so I think it was definitely super worth it. And you could definitely do it for cheaper, especially if you have already some of the materials on hand or you pick out fabric and like wait for a deal or something like that. Um, so I would definitely recommend doing it and hope this inspired you to do your own reupholstering.